Hey everyone, I'm rather incoherent, and I can't keep a straight face. I'm back with Operation Precipitous Agony. Very difficult, show of force, exalt squad. It's a little bit ominous, isn't it? There's gonna be extra troopers, mostly Advent soldiers, I think actually only Advent soldiers, definitely only Advent pod leaders. And an exalt squad is gonna drop in once we get started. We've got all three of our sparks, it's an assault mission, we always bring them. Our new pioneer is not finished yet, so we'll be bringing Ashen Fortress, but even if he was, I think I would still take Ashen Fortress, because this kind of scares me. We're in pretty much full tier 2 gear across the board here, there are a couple of bits and bobs that haven't been upgraded. I think the main reason I'm a little bit scared about this mission is we have a Sergeant Tech Specialist, a Sergeant Medic, and a Corporal Field Support. And the Field Support's a pretty good force multiplier for Carbon Mile back here. But the Medic's a bit weak, the Tech Spec's a bit weak. Honestly, even a Sergeant Combat Engineer's a little bit weak for this point in the campaign, I'm starting to feel. He's definitely one of the better units on the team, but I feel like our biological portion here is like... It's not the Dregs. We have worse soldiers. That's not true anymore. Oh my god, is this the Dregs now? Coming over to Sort by Rank. We have a total of four corporals and three squaddies. Sergeants is beginning to become the dregs. I mean, really, it's just most of my army, but lieutenants are the good soldiers at this point. We have a couple of captains. The vast majority of my soldiers have already reached sergeant. Yeah, this is actually the dregs. Even people like Liquid Danger and Wretched Phoenix are among my less competent soldiers these days. So yeah, the biological side of this leaves something to be desired. We've got Tracer Rounds on three of them because their aim's just not good enough. We've got Venom Rounds on our Marine because he needs to be bringing people down when he actually shoots them. I've only got a basic scope and an expanded mag here. I would definitely prefer to have a bipod over that, but that's right, cannons can't take them. I'll still take a lightweight frame instead. I have a supply officer here. They can reload me. I don't need the extra bullets. Let's go see if Operation Precipitous Agony is half as bad as advertised. Alright, we're starting on a rooftop. I like that. Oh, the objective's very close. This is supposed to be like an extra pods, very difficult mission. I think that means that probably from these rooftops, we can see, I don't know, maybe 20 enemies, 30, who's to say? Let's start with just running forward to here. I think we're gonna have a lot of vision of enemies around here. Well, make a liar out of me, why don't you? All right, we've got vision here. There's one inside the building. One very confused on top of the building, some down bottom. Carbon Miles currently body blocked. We do want to get him in position somewhere. Probably just like right here. Maybe a little further up is fine. The ladder up to this building is on the back of it. Just going to move to this full cover and sneak around, I think. I am a little bit worried they can patrol straight at us and pen there. So instead, I'm just going to move everyone on the high ground generally in the right direction this turn. Better flare. I'll take forward to here. My pioneer isn't exactly in the business of moving without being discovered. I'm just going to put him back here in the full cover and end his turn. He doesn't have much to do. Kind of obvious when he moves about. Carbon Mile is... Not able to move for some reason. He was originally body blocked. He's not anymore. I'm actually just going to console command him a little bit to the right. Now he can move. I'll, I'll even move him back to be super fair. Okay, not sure what that was about. I'm going to move to this position. It's a place I can fight from if we need to this turn. I don't want to fight from there, obviously, but we can do it if we have to. Is that cover? I don't think it is, but this is cover so I can stand here. Why do you go that way? I mean, as long as you get there in the end, I guess it's fine. I'm gonna send Wretched Phoenix down here. Liquid Danger probably wants to be up top, but I think we want to get on at this building. You know, the one they're all at. Dang. So, hopefully they don't patrol towards us. It'd be a little bit rude if they started in line of sight to spawn and then ran straight at us. Well, that's precisely what they're doing. It's a little bit rude. If the other pod wants to just, like, leap through the windows and dogpile this first one, I'll be glad to supernova a second mission in a row. Alright, we've got people coming in from the other side. Just like I said, we might have vision of pretty much the entire map from this rooftop. Oh, you're just gonna stay on the roof. You're not gonna go down and join them? You better not get a flank on this. Okay, he's going down and joining them. He hasn't spotted yet, so we're good. 
can we get onto the rooftop this turn with normal human soldiers? We would get spotted. So we can either engage or hold. If we're engaging, this is a window, supernova might go out of it. I'm looking at like this supernova. I know I can kill this whole pod. I worry about what this pod is doing. If we move first on these characters. Yeah, I don't have line of sight to that pod over there, I don't think. Oh, I do. I just barely have line of sight to like one of them, don't I? No. So as long as we just move here, we should be good. Grappling doesn't reveal you, so I can move over here and then blue move around the rooftop. And that'll be a way to get him out of the way. I think that's what we're going to do. Grappling. If I get revealed doing this, I'm going to be very upset. Good. Now we can blue move around to this part of the roof. Break line of sight with the team over there. We actually probably want to move Better Flare as well during this turn. It's not something that has to be done now. You know, I was originally planning on using Supernova, but Bombardment Protocol does most of the same work without using that ability. So it's obviously just better to start with Bombardment Protocol. It's doing insane work there. Depending on Purifier damage rolls, we could kill them all. None of the Purifiers died, so we're not killing them all. But that doesn't mean we have a bunch of 1 HP bombs taking cover with the rest of Advent, which is good for us. Now, I really want them to deploy towards us into the building and not backwards into the low grounds. No one went backwards. That's really good for us. That's really good for us. That trooper is dead. I can just drop a grenade on him and send him plummeting into his death. From here, I have a 79 on this purifier. Is there someone above him to get dropped? No. I also got a 70 there. I just obviously take this one. I don't need to overdrive right now. Killing that would have been very nice for us, but we have other ways of doing it. We can come Kinetic Strike this mech, which has become invisible. Well, I had other moves in mind anyway. Wretched Phoenix can drop down here and try to kill the Purifier Captain. Actually, I think Big Money might have a guaranteed kill with... Yeah, he does, with Combat Protocol. It's another 79. How many of these can you miss in a row? I mean, really. Good. Problem solved. That was a pretty damn big explosion, I'm gonna be honest. It was much bigger than I thought it would be. Just like... Jesus Christ. I can move back here into full cover combat protocol of the mech. That does mean I need to deal with this trooper in the back because he could potentially jump out of a window and take a flank. But that really shouldn't be too hard to do. Do I actually want to use combat protocol here? If I have other methods, wouldn't that be better? Let's do this before we forget about it. This is locked in. No one else has this grenade. And it's not like I'm dealing with him any other way. Although, it's surprisingly awkward. There we go. Grenade! Took way longer to line up than I thought it would. I thought this was just obviously doable, but what? He completely missed and just somehow pop flied back into him. Okay. Now, originally, I was planning on having Carbon Mile be here. But maybe what I want to do is just drop down and blue move to, I guess, here? And then chuck a grenade forward at the mech. I think it deals five with armor pierce one, so it is just barely a guaranteed kill on the mech. I can also put it on the stun lancer and the drone, I believe. I'm one dial from the mech and the stun lancer, it really hurts, but I can still kill both of these mechs in the building. I'd rather not destroy the loot, the greed never stops. I don't like the number of purifiers that are likely to live near me and be able to throw grenades. If I drop down over here and just blue move forward, that should get me in a position where I can kinetic strike the stun lancer without pulling, right? I'm not happy that those guys are visible while I'm doing this, but I don't think I actually saw them. Yeah. So now I can kinetic strike to kill this stun lancer. Very, very dead. Oh, are you kidding? Oof, that's not good. That is a huge pub. Was that eight? <laughs> I 
I think this might be time to overdrive and supernova, because, like, yeah, sure, I activate these guys, but I've already activated this, and I can kill pretty much the whole pod by overdriving. This is only the fourth pod we've seen. The third one we've activated, the fourth one is down right now. Over here in the Fog of War, I mean. It's possible that we could overdrive and still pull another pod. I still feel like this overdrive is so valuable that I just have to go do it right now. Oh my god, I actually don't even get in range of what I wanted to do. Well, we'll have to find something else to kill them. It's actually for the best, an overdrive unit tends to get largely ignored by active enemies. They recognize it as a non-threat, and that means by doing this instead, I'll be able to draw their fire more effectively. Pretty sure I pulled that next pod, but that's expected, I guess. Terminated. Yep. It's actually a relatively small pod, but there's a stun lancer in it that has us a bit spooked, understandably. I can use a blast canister here and just waste all five of these guys. Six, there's a guy in the back. Why do I have a full two actions again? If I had one action from killing that guy, I'd understand. I shouldn't have a full two. God, overdrive actions are just so broken on sparks when you're stacking other things with them. I swear to God, I shouldn't have these actions. What did I do? I blue moved forward. I meleeed the stun lancer pulling this pod. That gave me relentless and breakthrough. I overdrived. I should have... I shouldn't have two actions, but I should have one. I should still have my overdrive action, because I moved and punched. Or I should still have a move only and a shoot only. Either way, I should still have one action. I don't know why I have two, but I do know that this seems like the best thing to do with the first one. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. And now I have a move on it. So it looks like my action only action somehow got the ability to move as well and it was used on a shield bash. I'm gonna pop up here. Let them all get vision up and make sure that no one gets high ground shots on them. Carbon Mile. The way I evaluate this grenade has changed a lot, but it looks like you can't reach it where I want it. Can't get it down here either. So we're going to be taking out this mech and this drone. There's really nothing else competing for it at this point. <laughs> I really like that line. You risk your only hands to throw these. That's pretty good. I can move here, get vision on the purifier on the left, surprisingly. I don't want to stack up and give him good targets, though. That's flanked by the purifier down there. I mean, a purifier flank isn't really worth too much. I've still got this. Can I get a grenade on him? Come on, there are windows everywhere. What are you talking about? It like, it just exactly doesn't reach him. Look at this. The wall exactly stops at where it would be angling to him, and then it starts up again. So gross. So gross. We have a 47 there. Yeah, he has a grenade that's going to hit both of them. He's going to take it if he lives. So even though I'm not getting very good value on the combat protocol, I'm just dealing one damage to a non-mech. This is actually just like very directly stopping an incendiary grenade that would have hit us. Better flare. Is there any way you can get into full cover facing this way? There actually is. But it's not going to guarantee a kill unless somebody is helping you. Now, I can't help them, but I can just suppress this guy. That's not true. I can throw a grenade at him. Better Flare, what are your odds of actually landing this shot? It's a pretty important part of the plan that you, you know, shoot the guy and hit him. 90%. I'm gonna take the shot first. If I miss, I wanna suppress instead. Um, low rolling four also means I don't kill with a grenade, so I'm still gonna suppress him, I guess. Kinda sad about that. But disorienting removes the ability for him to throw the grenade. Exalt is dropping under the staircase. That seems very normal. They should all be shooting Ashen Fortress, and he's going to take some damage here, but he should be fine. So far, we have gained one health.
We've gained three health. Not sure what the Medrun's going to target. Oh, it's healing the officer or the assault in the back. That makes sense. It is a Medrun. I was just expecting it to be offensive, despite its name. Yeah, that Mac's going to be taking a shot, too. We've lost one health this turn. This is why I want to be on the high ground, because the heavy is able to get high ground shots if I'm still on the low ground. Lost two health? <laughs> it's disgusting. Kinetic plating does such insane work. Why didn't he run forward and try to stun land something? Ooh, Jesus. All right, we've lost eight health this turn. And there's more pods in the back. Jesus. There are kind of a lot of enemies on this map, aren't there? That wasn't really the best smoke target. Thanks for this pistol shot. Now I'm back up to only losing six health. This is probably going to be a stun on the medic. Oh no, it's a stun on liquid danger. Not happy about that. I am happy about the miss. I'll take that. We've lost four health now. We're getting closer to zero again. Kinetic plating is so damn strong. It's insane. Lost seven again. Damn. Well, that's pretty good. That stun lancer missing his attack was huge for us. Not only is Liquid Danger unhurt and not disoriented, it killed that purifier who had a grenade that could have caused problems for us. We lost seven health that turn. We can get some of it back by running these overwatches, probably. I can shield bash here, move to here, flamethrower these guys, but they're in smoke. It seems like the logical thing to do is to come over here and supernova as much of this as I can. Which isn't that much, honestly. Is my Barmer Protocol back? There's no way in hell, right? Yeah, it's got three turns left. We've barely gotten anything done so far. Exalt's just gonna drop in. There's nothing we can really do about that. I'd probably just reload my cannon and shoot this guy. I can't blue move into full cover facing that direction because he's in the way. And it's like, what else am I going to do this turn other than waste them? So, let's start with that. Absolutely murdered. Let's see what we can get happening with our artillery spark. He has pretty solid grenades, but he needs line of sight to actually shoot the damn things. Because this building is so destroyed, I can jump up to this window and shoot grenades out of it. I'd rather be on top of the building, honestly. I'm expecting my grenades to get blocked by walls in awkward ways. Oh, right, you're just standing under a sunroof. I completely forgot that was the case. Now, unfortunately, our grenade range is great, but it's not quite as insane as I need it to be. I can... This is not an actual guaranteed kill on the Purifier, but it is a guaranteed kill on the Trooper, and a 50-50 on the Purifier. I can overdrive and shoot a different target. Like this mech. I don't feel like I need to do that this turn. I think this is good enough, and next turn I can overdrive to shoot and launch a grenade. High roll on the damage there is good to see. We probably want an overdrive this turn. We don't have any eyes from our blue move range, unfortunately, unless we go on the low ground and compromise our shot quality. I can blue move up here and fire a rocket, but it doesn't seem like a great rocket either. We have 18 active with Exalt dropping in. It's just ridiculous, isn't it? There are so many. We can definitely start chewing our way through some of this. We don't have overdrive, but we can just shield bash out to here to kill the assaults. Uh, we can't get a kill on the officer like that. Kinetic strikes on cooldown. We can shield bash this demolitionist and then torch the stun lancer and the trooper here. We might be supernova in here, but the supernova just looks pretty weak, right? Like, they're spread out just enough. Like, these guys are just not barely in range. No matter where you go, they're just barely out of range. They're spread really well. I think the thing to do is shield bash into flamethrower. So, let's take it. Hopefully these overwatches give us health and not take it away. Two games. One lost. Unfortunate.
Missing that would have been pretty rough. That was actually a pretty big 9%. I can hit the Medrone in the back, but to do that, I would have to use the Blast Canister, which can't burn the Stun Lancer. But it would hit the Officer, but again, it's not killing the Officer, so who cares? I'm going to do this to try to torch that tree as well, even though I'm not hitting the guy behind it. Seems like the sensible thing to do. Very, very good. That's three kills this turtle Ash and Fortress. I'm just going to blue move here and drop a repair onto Carbon Mile because he might be taking some damage soon. Like, let's be honest, everyone else is still fighting, everyone else is doing things. But what's happening here is, uh, it's literally Ash and Fortress versus the fucking world over here, isn't it? We might be sprinting forward on these people in the back, we just don't have good positions to do anything right now. I'm gonna be taking these positions on Wretched Phoenix and Big Money, just get them moving as far forward as they can so they can actually contribute next turn because they really can't right now. Over here, I would actually like to say roughly where I am so I can toss ammo back to Carbon Mile. I'm going to move to this location and shoot the med drone unless I'm going crazy and don't have vision on it. I thought I just checked. Okay, we're good. 90% to kill. That's nice. That leaves just better flare. Where even are you? I can take this corner cover. I've seen 33 enemies so far, I think there's no pods left to reveal, so I'm gonna take this corner cover and Sentinel Overwatch. Actually, she's only a sergeant. Does she even have Sentinel? Yeah, she's not an she's not a lieutenant. She doesn't have Sentinel. Anyway, here comes Exalt. We've got an assault, a grenadier. Not sure what those other two are just yet. Burn to death on the stun lancer. Gonna see a lot of shots come in here. That's good to see, that's a great start. I'm expecting him to take serious wounds this mission. Unless he just kills everyone who runs up to him for melee attacks, that could also make it easier. Anyway, on today's episode of Ashen Fortress vs. The World. Jesus Christ, he's untouchable. <laughs> oh. It's not even fair, is it? They're just getting terrible RNG versus this... Alright, stop. Stop. Somebody hit him, at least. No, not like that! Okay, at least we missed. Thank God somebody managed to hit him. I mean, they didn't do anything, but it counts. Good ordering, AI. Real good job marking after you missed all your attacks. Jesus Christ. Like, it's okay if I have to fix him up a little bit. What is this shit show? <laughs> Could you hit him? Please? Please don't miss. Thank you. I need, like, every shot for the rest of the turn to hit him so we can be at least something. Okay, we're getting there. Two high roll damages in a row. Didn't miss. We're we're closer to even now. We're still ahead of where we should be. We should be, like, deep into the wounds right now. I expected that. That was the plan. It's fine if that happens. You probably shouldn't be trying, little Medron. You're really making things worse. Did we really get through that whole turn without breaking the shielding? Good job, better flare. You're even able to stand on the air, which is probably the more impressive part of the shot. In from the side. Medic versus medic, huh? Honestly, the med drone might win. Better flare's in a bit of danger here. I can't really think about the fact that I was stranding her next to uh, Exalt. I kind of want to hunker here and not take the 71% that never kills. But, like, honestly, you just need to maybe run. I don't really know to where, but you need to break line of sight with all these dudes. Which isn't happening this turn, but you can at least get in full cover. I do think this is overdrive, shoot, grenade. 
the only heat grenade I have access to. God, it's lagging out really hard right now. The only good grenade I have is this one, so I want to shoot one of these two on the left. But that's definitely what we're doing. We're starting this with the overdrive. Kane here is a sniper. His AB2 aim is a little bit scary. You have a grenade launcher and some number of grenades. I honestly think that's much scarier. Oh, but it's not guaranteed kills on you guys because you're in cover. You're reducing my damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we can do something about that. That's something we have power to interact with. This almost certainly is an overdrive it's used this turn as well. Our sparks just have to do serious work to deal with Exult, while Ash and Pioneer heroically self-sacrifices versus everyone else down there. I can move to here on Exalted Citadel. That might pull the Overwatch. If it does, that's fine. It does not. I can take this rocket on their cover. Now let's see the results of these shots and grenades. This is the only fully efficient shot, but the grenade has to hit him anyway, doesn't it? So I think I'm going to take this grenade for the guaranteed kill on Kane and the damage on Sloane. And then I'll pick off the guy on the left, the Grenadier. Spark's just doing work today. Like, this mission is really all about them, huh? More than any previous mission. Except arguably last mission, where it was just about Ash and Fortress and no one else. Take the shot on Gabriel next. Will the death of this one change I just see these two. This is the one that's active and a threat. I'm going to reposition back up top, I think. It depends on what Ashen Fortress is doing. Ashen Fortress, do you feel like you finally have a supernova worth your turn? That's not terrible. The mech is probably a bigger deal. We can kill a Gunslinger, a Trooper, and a mech. Or we can kill a Stun Lancer. Do I have Kinetic Strike back? I have Kinetic Strike back. I can Blast Canister this Trooper and then Kinetic Strike the mech. Oh wait, does this mech have 12 health? You're not the same kind of mech I've been fighting. You actually live through this, don't you? And you have smoke. Well, that's no fun. Probably gonna use Supernova then. I can Blast Canister the Trooper and Kinetic Strike the Officer. There's like other things I can do. These two guys are both at like one health actually. So if I'm next to them, I'm probably killing them. I honestly think due to Counter-Strike, I don't care about using Supernova. So I'll be getting enough value from this. There's a lot of enemies to tap through, Jesus. I don't need to stay next to them because they'll probably move next to me again anyway. My shield doesn't one-shot this, does it? No, my shield is 5 to 6. So we're going to take this Kinetic Strike. We still don't feel like we have the Supernova. Although if we do have the Supernova, we can just do it afterwards and go in this direction with it. That could make a lot of sense. Bring down the mech. The Stun Lancer isn't guaranteed to die if I use Counter Strike. I'm going to have like a 30% to miss. I think it's finally time to Supernova. All right, nine left. One of them is a member of Exalt that's active. One is a member of Exalt that's stunned. You guys down here originally wanted to deal with the mech. That no longer seems like a high priority, does it? Oh, there's another mech inside the building. Shit, hi there.
How's your Haywire protocol looking? Not the best. If I fail safe, I can get it better. I think we're just taking Grenade into Augmented Shotgun for the kill. Although we can reposition a little bit for it. If I somehow lost my grenade there, I'd be very upset. The big thing here is that Phoenix could come take cover here if you have the movement for it. Here and here are equidistant. There's no additional aim bonus, so I just moved to here. This isn't a guaranteed kill by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, it never kills. If I chuck a mine forward, it can't quite reach. So we're gonna need help. That means we want to find our supply officer. I believe they were carrying two grenades. They were. Is your gun currently empty? Yes. Hey, supply officer, do your job. <sighs> What's the range on this? Can't even check. It's just under it. It goes up to like here, I'm guessing. I'm like two or three tiles short. Can I get the grenade from here? Yes, I can. It's a little bit awkward. I don't know why it jumped out there, but it does. And I'll just take this grenade and not move. I guess I should have reloaded first. I can't imagine that coming into play. And now we're in guaranteed range on the shotgun. We just have to actually land the shots. So 7% of the time, this gets real awkward real fast. Good. Liquid Danger having to come over here and take like a 75 or 80 would have been pretty gross for us. Now, coming down here, there's a heavy that can flank, an officer that can flank. I don't want to be on this cover on the side. I can take this corner cover and shoot at the med drone that's currently threatening better flare. It's not like I'm doing anything else this turn. It would be really nice if you could kill that, but I'm not expecting it. Very nice. Now, I can't move without triggering that overwatch, so we're just going to hunker down. Should have reloaded first. Oh, well. So I have a phase move right now from shooting that flanked guy, and for some reason I can use it with my suppression? I don't think that's normal, I think that's a bug consistently happening with Overdrive. Since he's Supernova, being like on the low ground is super sketchy. I don't want high ground shots against this, because he is going to be taking damage from everything that comes his way. I'm going to get back on the high ground, make sure there are no high ground shots against me. Because they're probably going to be ignoring Ash and Fortress. And it still thinks I can suppress, so that's actually unrelated to the phase move, it's just Overwatch, or Overdrive rather, freaking out a little bit. That's it for us this turn. This heavy shouldn't have any good shots. Yeah, we, we've healed Carbon Mile, we saw all of this coming a mile away. No horrible jokes intended. I agree with Carbon Mile, that's literally the point of you guys. That should be a flashbang, they're fine. The Gunslinger shooting at those guys in full cover, that's completely okay by me. I mean, I'm not happy about him taking one damage, but it hardly matters. He'll be out for like three days. The infirmary is permanently staffed on our ship. This is probably just gonna be wasted on Pioneer. Yep. All right, that actually does damage and wounds and threats armor. I'm not as happy about that as I thought I was. I thought I'd be using a flamethrower. The assault's getting nothing done. Okay, never mind. He's critting for seven. I didn't see the chance, but I'm sure it was miserably low. They're on fire now, that's good. Don't you dare. Okay, it's a shotgun, so they had the scope, or the stock rather, but nothing else. Okay. I think what I'm gonna try to do is resupply here, use the free move here, and then resupply across the gap. Do you have a grenade in case I can't do that? Yes, I still have a grenade here in case Atomic Apostle fails to do their only job. I actually have a um, grappling hook, so I can go straight across. I can get to here. What would I be doing from there other than moving? Well, it'll be a free move, though. Do you need ammo? No, not at all. So I'm going to grapple across to this side. Then I'm going to chuck a new magazine over to Carbon Mile. It's a good thing I carry bullets in whatever massive size that is, you know, just in case. That needs to go down, but we don't really have a good way to get started there. I'm just going to be moving forward. I can just point and click somebody to death. 
Unfortunately, I can't point and click at the only person that I really need to. I wonder about that Liquid Danger can't blue move to them with his cannon. I should have a grenade here. No, I don't. I've already used both of them on my Atomic Apostle. Honestly, I might just run down and Kinetic Strike the guy. One turn off of Bombardment. Kinetic Strike on its own won't do it. Better player is probably finishing off Kane this turn, even though it's a seriously unimportant action. There are a couple of two turn loots we could actually just grapple those instead of contributing. Probably better to shoot somebody. This is really awkward for us. I think we have to ignore this character, sprint better flare away to break line of sight, and work on other things. If we're ignoring her, she's probably coming up a ladder and this position isn't safe. Which makes me feel like, you know, an idiot. Is this really not cover on the right side? Oh, because it doesn't exist. I could go hide inside the 3D printer, I guess. They'll never think to look for a Atomic Apostle there. I think with these two, I'm just going to continue moving them around the building on the right side. Oh, going to move here on big money and take the world's weakest Overwatch. Coming. Wretched Phoenix is going to move all the way over. They're disoriented. They really okay. can't do anything of great relevance, but they can just keep pushing this way into tracks. They're in relatively safe positions. My angles here sort of suck, but moving forward means I get flanked. Moving here puts me in half cover. If I pull back here, I break line of sight to the low ground, but they can get in full cover and see me again. I really just want to heal myself, right? He's not going to kill on most hits. I'm going to pull back with the intention of breaking line of sight Absolutely. and heal myself here. I think that's actually the safest place she has and it leaves her in a position to be more relevant than, like, sprinting away would. I like that she talks herself up when she does surgery on herself. Unfortunately, this flank shot isn't really safely takeable because this soldier is very likely to, say, just run up to here and stop. Our positions over here suck a little bit. The only safe place we have is actually inside of this 3D printer, which isn't particularly safe. But it is the safest place we've got, so go be a 3D printer, I guess. I'm going to rapid repair myself for my first action. I do not care about Ash and Fortress at all, he'll be fine, they're probably mostly ignoring him anyway. For my next action, I have a 100 on the Assault, but it doesn't kill. 76 on the Purifier, but it doesn't kill. Well, that narrows it down to Kinetic Strike here, doesn't it? It's only a 95, unfortunately, but I mean, what else am I doing? Because the Assault's getting one tapped by my Sniper up top. Did you just break his cover? If only had that knew my actual body count. <sighs> Why are you like this? It's fine, they'll think he's a 3D printer, they won't shoot. I'm going to move up here and see if I can't get like an AOE suppression all the way down range and try to keep Atomic Paso alive. Because he's suddenly looking like he is in grave danger. Got nothing. Going to Overwatch for the oncoming flank from downstairs. I think I have to sprint here instead of doing anything useful now. Just to keep Atomic Paso alive. That's very annoying. Collateral damage in XCOM 2 is just ridiculous sometimes. Land my shots, blow out my own unit's cover. It just happens. I've seen Overwatch with mag rifles blow out the cover. Sorry, blow out the ground underneath my own units that were nowhere near, just on the rooftop with the Overwatcher. Well, that flank's still there. But I mean, I can only protect them from so many angles with one spark. Do you have a grenade that you're chucking? Okay. That wouldn't have been a big deal if it hit, but it didn't hit anyway. This is fine. Wait, why'd you shoot at the one in cover? Because it has the highest chance to kill. The other ones never kill. She's calling for evac. I would like to stop that. And panicking hard by the looks of it. 
All right. These two are no longer disoriented. The Pioneer is no longer shut down. Why can't you move? I'm going to teleport them twice like I did earlier. Oh, this cover exists again. Isn't that just the damnedest thing? All of this exists again. What do you mean it's back? How does that work? If I saved and loaded, I would have some idea of how that could happen, but um, I didn't. Very, very confused and upset about that one. That's a wild glitch. Let's have somebody pull this Overwatch wherever it is. The Overwatch is from the officer. You can just kinetic strike the officer. That's always an option. The officer's probably already dead. I would rather kinetic strike this assault. I'm just going to blue move like this to pull the Overwatch real quick for the rest of my team. Good job, Advent Officer. You're making it worse. We'll take this Kinetic Strike here on the Advent Assault. Destroyed. Very nice. We can get up to here and figure out what exactly is going on down here with that last member of Exalt. I'm out of Blast Canisters. That's not true. I still have one. I could kill this guy, but I've got all the time in the world to do that. I'll put some damage on this Purifier. That should put him in one shot for pretty much anything else. I've got the Bombardment Protocol here. And then I can just shoot this flanked Purifier to finish him off. Seems reasonable. Somebody's gonna have to go finish this character, but I believe we have the people on board to do it right now. Good job, Exalted Citadel. That's such a strong ability. Anyway, get him out of the game. An efficient kill. We can reposition now. I don't think there's anywhere we can reposition to that would ever matter. I'll go up top, I guess. I can't quite get to this loot, unfortunately. Is there any other loot somewhere else? There's loot down there. Oh, no. All right, um, <laughs> I figured out the play with you. What's your grapple loot looking like? Good. Atomic Apostle really contributing to the strategy layer on this mission. Now, Wretched Phoenix, would you like to get some vengeance? I mean, it's not really the best vengeance, and there's a chance you low roll and don't kill him. In which case, things will be very bad for you, but try not to do that. Yeah, see? Like that. No, we still got a soldier here in the back, an Advent Gunslinger. That's really not a hard kill. We just need to, like, be even passingly competent on big money. Do we have a guarantee here? No, if I go into the open, it's a risk. So I'm going to go here instead, even though my odds will be worse, because we're not actually guaranteed here. One in ten to have to think really hard. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, big money. The only thing you can do is shoot this enemy, so please do that. Oh my god, it's a hundred. I was not expecting that. You champion. Okay, we have to think a lot less hard now. I was worried about this guy being alive, because I would have to find a way to also simultaneously deal with the exalt that's trying to evac. I was so excited that I killed her that I didn't even check what she dropped. I hope I got her sword or her shotgun. Oh, you're not really alive. Like, not, not really. Oh, you also can't move. What's going on with this map? This has to be a mod added map. Like, I don't necessarily recognize these buildings. And it's just fucked. Like, these parcels I kind of recognize, but these buildings, I'm just glitching out and not able to move all the time today. I might clear out every mod added map pack I have and see if I'm getting these bugs with uh, the vanilla maps. And if I'm not, which I'm sure I'm not, then what I'm probably going to start doing is slowly re-adding the map packs one at a time and seeing which ones reintroduce bugs as I play on them. But with things like parcel packs, that could take so long to play through it all, like be multiple campaigns. I don't know. I definitely want to do testing on the maps. I've had a suspicion for a while now 
that the black screen buzzing bug was related to one of my map packs somehow. Regardless, let's wrap this up. I can move over here and Kinetic Strike. That's only a 96. Can't quite blue move there. Oh, I don't need to move there. I can just double glue grapple this turn like a champion. I'm sorry for not giving you experience with Atomic Apostle. I just really need all this useless garbage. And we'll just chuck a grenade down here because these are new and improved heat volatile mix grenades. The Gunslinger doesn't stand a chance. Does that... Oh, is this an extract mission? I thought we got loot from this. I'm gonna be really sad then, because I think on extract missions you don't actually get exalt guns. I swear this is a loot mission. Ah, come on! He was stunned! How'd he get to evac? Well, we'll see Kane again, and when we do, we'll kill him. Moving first with Ashen Fortress. Can Ashen Fortress just set the bomb himself? I don't think he can do objectives. Oh my god, he can. What's that animate like? Oh my god, he does it with his big robot hands. You can't see it because he's huge, but it works. And this is an evac mission that blows. First wave out. Wait, alien activity? There's somebody alive somewhere? Status confirmed. X4 charges are armed. Move to the extraction point for immediate evac. I I I'm going. Well, our objective is evac, so we'll just be leaving. Let's get out of here. Since it's an evac mission, we don't even get guns from Exalt. Very sad to find that out. I'm at least equally happy to find out that you can set bombs with your giant robot hands, though. Lots of wounds that mission. I think all of our sparks took a wound. Bitter Flare took a wound. I'm not sure who the last one was. It was probably pretty minor. MVP Ashen Fortress with stats that look like Pioneer stats. Yeah. Carbon Mile did a lot of work that mission. Didn't shoot his gun nearly as much as I would have liked, but uh, but that's what happens when you're getting five kills and doing 40 damage with grenades. Exalted Citadel also doing a good bit of work. Most of that was just bombardment protocol in the opening. Wretched Phoenix doing the best he could for someone who was disoriented and out of position all map. Same with Liquid Danger, really. Landing every shot, doing decent work considering. Big Money doing almost fuck all. He used combat protocol once and missed every single thing he was able to miss. Bitter Flare doing the complete opposite, landing everything and still almost doing nothing, but at least it was something. And Atomic Apostle actually got two kills and 11 damage before they went on official loot grappling duty. All of our mechs are T-posing in the front, can't see anything, promotions all around, obviously Ash and Fortress couldn't get one. The wounds are not too bad at all. Operation Precipitous Agony could have gone a lot worse. Sad that we aren't getting exalt guns for it, but what can you do? We delayed the dark event, hopefully we'll counter it someday and then find out what it was actually all for. Coming over to View Soldiers, Exalted Citadel is getting promoted, and oh no, now he's a paladin. Which means now he too has Supernova, because that's all sparks, that's not just a pioneer thing. As always, I don't care about the concealment perk whatsoever. Shadow Strike's obviously good if you're going to be in concealment a lot, but why would I be in concealment on my spark? Sentry is really good if you're on Overwatch, but I'm not ever going to be. I really care about Sentry because of Hunter Protocol being an Overwatch shot. Heavy Duty Repair is crazy. Heavy Duty Repair essentially doubles how much you repair for. It's a huge, huge amount and very, very valuable. Overclock, however, might just be one of the more insane abilities available to a Spark. When Overdrive is activated, the Spark gains gargantuan bonuses to aim, mobility, crit chance, and hacking until the end of the turn, also grants the Haywire Protocol ability. Now, I'm pretty sure we don't care about that last bet. We get plus 100 hacking and haywire. That's honestly not enough to guarantee much other than a shutdown on low defense units. But 5 mobility, 15 aim, and 30 critical chance on what could very well be a triple shot turn because you just overdrove is insane. 
I very much want both of these abilities, and I'm going to take a small break while I decide which one I'm getting, because I'm getting both. Like, as soon as I can spend AP, this is the first thing I'm buying. But I don't know which one I'm buying first. So, I think whichever one I get, I'm going to regret not getting the other one very often. They're both incredibly valuable. This is one of the few times where if there was a single choice to pick on a tree, it would be incredibly hard to pick which one because it would be a permanent lock-in. I'm very glad I can just buy the other one later. Overclock is the proactive offensive one that's obviously insane. Heavy duty repair is going to be like incredibly valuable in the situations where it's valuable, but will very often be irrelevant. In fact, in every mission he's ever been on, he's never needed heavy duty repair. It would never have impacted the mission in any meaningful way. So even though I desperately want that and feel as though I need it at some point, Overclock is going to come first. Carbon Mile going up from Knight to Cavalier. This is what? Corporal Sergeant. He's essentially Lieutenant now. We have a lot of abilities marked on this one. Concussive Grenades is valuable for making his grenades disorient. We've talked about Codexes. Disorient's just good when you're not killing something anyway. Not a high priority. You're going to notice these next three trees are all in the same tier on Sapper. You can buff your Incendiary Grenades to make Organics Panic. You can buff your Acid Winds to make Robotics take plus two from sequent attacks. And you can buff your Acid Winds, or sorry, your Gas Winds to stun for one action on Biological Units. Was it called Biological Units in XCOM 1, or am I just saying Biological instead of Organic for no reason? Hmm. Regardless though, all of these perks are not super impactful on their own. Corrosive is probably the best one, because I'm most likely to be carrying acid grenades anyway, and rupturing robotics is a really valuable thing, but I'm not really planning on taking any of these three. Just talking about them all now, because they sort of are a set with burnout. What I'm looking at is Bandolier for a dedicated ammo slot, and when we get to see the ammo slot that we bring on Carbon Mile, you'll understand why I want that so badly, and of course I want his grenades, you've seen the work he puts in with heat grenades and volatile. And then Explosive Action. Explosive action is the only way this spark can ever reposition and shoot in the same turn. It does mean the next turn he will never shoot, but that's okay. Right now, I'm leaning towards explosive action, strictly because I don't actually have his enhanced ammo yet. And in fact, once I do, I'm just giving up one grenade. This is one grenade. It's very good, don't get me wrong, but it's not a super high priority. Explosive action lets me move and shoot or reload and shoot every three turns. That's pretty good. I would like everyone to remember that our newest artillery spark, who is now our lieutenant, our lowest ranked lieutenant, obviously he has very low experience compared to the rest of them, is already this high in the ranks. I don't remember when we got him. I'm going to check when his first mission was. It's currently June 20th. My Lieutenant Artillery Spark's first mission was on June 14th, and he is a Lieutenant. It took him less than a week. So when I say that the issue with Sparks isn't just that they're strong, don't get me wrong, they're strong, it's that you're able to just throw them on so many assaults with Covert Infiltration. This is what I'm referring to. He is six days old, and he is higher ranked than half my soldiers. Anyway, we're taking Concussion Grenades on Wretched Phoenix. We've talked about that decision a hundred times over. On Liquid Danger, I think I'll be taking him placed. The other ones just really don't compete with it in my eyes. We only talked about that once before, so I actually will go over it a little bit more. I guess we're doing it on Gothic Toaster instead. And placed makes you have more aim and more range if you didn't move last turn. That lets them actually stay in one position more, use their volume of fire more, they can shoot and suppress and not have to move and reposition more often. That's just really valuable. Bring them on is a small crit chance bonus, which is not huge to me. And combat awareness is a small defense bonus, but because it's actually increasing your defense and you're probably in full cover because you don't want to move very often, means that with 55% chance reduced to hit, the enemies probably just target somebody else, and that's not even necessarily a good thing. Big Money is reaching Lieutenant. Is this our first Lieutenant Tech Specialist all campaign? Oh my god, it is. I haven't even had to make this decision yet. What the hell do I do here? Okay, Disruption Field. You use this, you get plus 15% defense until your next turn, and any reaction shots against you miss. This is an activatable lightning reflexes for Tech Specialist. It's better than that, though, because it's all reaction shots, not just the first one that would hit. 
Neutralizing agents is going to make your aid protocol remove acid, burning, and poison, giving you one turn of immunity to those, and it's going to increase the radius of the smoke by one tile. EMP Shockwave now makes combat protocol ignore shields, and it gives them a minus 15 hack defense bonus, and it has a 20% chance to shut down. Now honestly, I think EMP Shockwave is very minor. Most mechs don't have shields, they do have armor, but they don't have shields. Reducing their hack defense isn't great, I'm damaging them, I don't want to hack them anymore. However, a counterpoint might be like Sectopods have 40 health, you can combat protocol and then hack them. And I think to talk about this fairly, we need to talk about the next ability, Electronic Warfare, which gives you plus 10 hacking and makes failsafe a free action. After all, I'm already looking at failsafe haywire, that's three actions to use combat protocol as well, so I need this to lower it back to two. So this is just a flat plus 10 hacking all the time. Failsafe is a free action the first time you use it. And if you ever use a shutdown, it'll do additionally a one turn or one action stun afterwards. That's pretty good. Plus 10 hacking is just generally valuable. What's it up against? Anti-armor doctrine isn't a big deal. Shredding armor is always nice, but the tech specialist really isn't expected to do that very much. I'm expecting to be getting value on the tech specialist by using the gremlin or throwing grenades or using heavy armor. I'm not expecting to do it by shooting my gun. I know I can take anti-armor doctrine and marauder, but there are other things competing with them that I view as much better unless I'm spending huge amounts of AP. Targeting uplink allows me to boost a mechanical ally, so a spark. I use 50% of aim penalties. I give them plus 10% chance to crit per gremlin tech level, so right now 20, eventually 30. And I give them squad sight. Is there ever a situation where I really want to use targeting uplink with an infiltrator? Because it doesn't do shit for pioneers, and it does very little for artillery. And the answer is no, because I probably want my infiltrators moving forward, because the turn after I use targeting uplink, he'll be out of range and have to run forward. So I would be taking electronic warfare every time, which means this can be used to help me hack huge late game enemies like Sactopods. Neutralizing agents is obviously really good, makes aid protocol much more relevant, but I don't think it competes with either Disruption Field or EMP Shockwave. I really like Disruption Field and I can see myself spending AP to buy this on every single one of my tech specialists, but I think taking EMP Shockwave into Electronic Warfare is the only way to reliably hack mechanical units in any capacity, so I'm going to be doing that. It also means that the way I'm hacking them is by combat protocoling them and then using failsafe on the hack, which is dealing damage to them and making sure nothing bad happens if I fail. And that means that I'm safe to try it and contributing towards killing it even if I fail. So it actually works out really, really smoothly. I do really like neutralizing agents. I think disruption field is great, but I think this, especially combined with electronic warfare, which has a much weaker competition, is better. Just barely. Maybe a lot. It depends on how the numbers line up later. We'll see. Coming over to Better Flare, she's gonna get that Sentinel that I thought she had during the mission. Applied Knowledge just doesn't do very much for me. And Overcharge Capacitors would imply that I'm actually going to fire my Arc Thrower. Point and Click Disorient is just not worth a turn at this point in the game. If I have to use it, then I have to use it, but generally I'd rather give myself the tools to avoid that situation than help with that. I've got flashbangs on so many characters on these missions, I just don't feel like Overcharge Capacitors is the way to get that effect. And Atomic Apostle is reaching Sergeant. We're going to be giving him this. Smokescreen is obviously better right now, but in a couple of ranks when he gets upgraded to Scanners, it will be vastly better for us to have more and free Battle Scanners. Not that we've ever built or used the Battle Scanner this campaign, but I promise they're real and we have a use for them. As always, we don't care about the Supply Drop. Let's go finish this Radio Relay for real this time. A Covert Ops going to finish in like 5 hours, so we're not actually finishing this. Let's see what it is. Some of our people are a little Cyclone got wounded, his hacking went up by 5, he got us some scanning sites, what were they? Rookies, don't care. Oh, it's just rookies? Just the one? I didn't want to click on that. I'm not, I'm not doing this, I have the money I need. Take me back. Oh, you don't want to give me that warning when I'm leaving the radio relay, but when I'm leaving the useless supplies, now you'll tell me. Thanks, really appreciate that. All right, we boosted our income in Western US. That's really good. We have 126 intel. We're going to immediately start contact with West Arctic. Commander, we've utilized all 
of our available communications I know I know I'm working on building the next one upgrade our systems so let's make contact here how far away is gothic toaster from healing and how long is that wound on cyclone those actually matter a lot gothic toaster's out for five more days and cyclone is out for 28 hours both of them have one more stacking mission they need to do before this month ends now we have a new infiltration mission no we have one expiring it's this one we just can't afford to spend the soldiers on it i don't feel too many assaults coming up for dark events that matter more so we'll keep making contact that'll be the assaults i was talking about this one counters the hidden event so we haven't even seen the other one yet but we can counter this one there's gonna be an advent pod dropping in but that's it the hunter may or may not be here just like heads up there could be a hunter who knows how likely yeah let's go do it we just did the first mission in the chain we're gonna finish this off so, the three sparks, they're coming on the mission, their gear's not changing. See you later, guys. I said before that I think I can get borderline unlimited use out of making more and more Gauntlet Mark IIs. I'm putting my money where my mouth is and making another one. Because we're going to have two common engineers on this mission. Alright, that's the squad kitted out. Alongside our sparks for this assault, we're going to have two common engineers, a sapper, I know it doesn't look like it anymore, he's not very <laughs> medic colored as his armor takes up more and more of his body. Yeah, I'm gonna have to fix Laughing Octopus, it's getting out of control now. I originally just inverted his colors, but I like the red matching his eyes a little bit more. Our new Laughing Octopus has had to have his color swap, there's no way around the fact that he didn't look like a medic at all without main armor white, because there's so little of a secondary color now. But he is our lowest ranking field medic. We also have a sapper, a pair of combat engineers, and a marine. Once again, not really the best in terms of the team supporting our sparks, so I do think this one's better than the last one. I actually think they're substantially better than the last one. The sheer quantity of explosives here is going to do a lot of work. It is another very difficult mission with guaranteed reinforcements, though, so it can still be pretty damn rough. Anyways, that's it for now. Next time we're getting into Operation Frenzied Pipe. Not going to touch that one. I've been rather coherent. Hope you've been enjoying the series. Hope you enjoyed the episode, and I'll see you in the next one.